So, one of my very first starts in Baltimore, might have been 1983. I took the mound, bottom of the first, and they in the and in between innings they played the song "Paint It Black." And I'm so I'm taking my warm up pitch and I'm going, "Hey, is this coincidence? Right? I didn't know." <laughs> and then we came back in. This was a balanced schedule, so he played everybody twice. I came back in. I made another start. Same thing. I just sort of then like every year that I pitched in Baltimore after that, same thing. That was cool. That's that gave you a yeah. interest. Song. Anyhow, yeah, the Orioles, yeah. So before we go, Do you remember Storm Davis? Yes. Right hand pitcher? There's a, there's a call, there's a song called Stormy. And they'd play it first inning when he when he took them out. Where were we interleague that the organist plays songs? Based on people that are up. Atlanta. 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 That wasn't yeah. Italy. I thought it was yeah. Italy. No, it was in the Atlanta. Nancy Faust used to do it. Yeah. Who's that? I know. Nancy Faust. Yeah. Nancy Faust, yeah. At the White Sox. Yeah. She used to. That's right. Be creative. Anyhow, okay. Let's talk baseball. Okay. First of all, would it do me any good to pass the first question to Jenny Cavanaugh? No, not yet. <laughs> be, be on guard Sunday morning. We talked about that this morning with the pitching guys. and Yeah, Sunday morning. Yeah. So um, just counting the days shouldn't give us a clue? Well, yeah, I'm sure you've done. Yeah, the, the, hey, here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal. The pitchers, you know, when we start playing games, they start back, they backtrack from February 23rd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, but that, that gives you a pretty good indication. If I mean, come on. But I'd like to officially, like, you know, it's sort of a feather in the cap for the guys who make the rotation. Right. And, a, you know, a feather in the cap for the guy who's opening day starter. Anyhow. Um, and you, you touched on this the other day with McMahon, but with McMahon and Hampson kind of looked on as separate entities. But the difference between last year and this year, and between showing up just to make a team and showing up to make a team better and prepare for your season. There, there is a slight difference there. Can you kind of put that into words? Well, I think, uh, you know, with, with both those guys, I think that, you know, they're, you know, I think this was the, you know, first year, I think, for, for Mac, where I think he came in with, a, not that he didn't come in with a great deal of intent the last couple of years, but it's just different. You know, I think now he understands you know who's who's on our roster, where he where he potentially fits, and I think this year he came in, you know, extreme extremely motivated to to make a point, and he has. You know, Hampson, I think, you know, coming up last year, uh, making his debut, you know, being a part of our team for you know the greater part of the second half. You know, he came in, you know, trying to, again, you know, impress us to the point where, you know, he he wants to prove that he should make this team. So both guys have really, I think, you know, made a point to, to come in ready to, to prove that they belong on this roster. With, um, with McMahon. It seems like there's a great concentration level here, not to give away in bats, not to succumb to, oh my God, it's spring training, can I get just get through this? And he, you know, even talking to him a few minutes ago, he's talking about instead of being sick of being here, you want to hone in on the regular season, treat it like a regular season. Yeah. Do you see that maturity? Yeah, I see maturity. I think, you know, I mean, maturity comes in a lot of different ways, but, you know, with him, uh, you're seeing it just in you know daily conversations. You're seeing it on the field and interactions with the coaches and the players. Uh, you're seeing it between the lines. So it's a you know it's a it's a great thing to see that development from a couple of years ago. And that's you know that's something that you know as coaches you know we've seen over our years of coaching and even as you know at the back end of my career I saw it from young players you know how they how they matured. So. You know, it's part of the process, and and a lot of times players don't understand. You know, younger players don't under don't understand what they're going through until they till they look back. 
and they realize, you know, where they've been. And I'm sure if you ask, you know, all players, all younger players, by younger players, I mean, you know, guys with, you know, less than a couple years of service time who've been in big league camp, who've been on the, you know, who've, who've been in major league spring trainings, have touched the big leagues, you know, they're a different player now than they were three years ago. With um, Hampson, I've seen, you know, whether it's dropping a bunt on his own or the other night, the delayed steal, it's almost like he wants to show a whole lot of things to make himself hard right. to prepare for. Yeah, well, I, th I mean, that's part of his game. I mean, we, you know, the, the only thing that the coaches and I ask of players is to, you know, play their game, you know, be, be themselves and do what they do best. And <clears throat> as it relates to Garrett, you know, the, you know, the, the speed game is part of, you know, a big part of what he does well. And that was exhibited the other night, you know, or, or the last couple of games where he laid a bunt down. There's been a couple of stolen bases. He tried the delayed steal. I mean, these are the things that we encourage in spring training, you know, in these exhibition games that, you know, that's what you, <clears throat> that's how you learn. That's how you get comfortable, uh, you know, doing things, whether it's bigger leads, whether it's, you know, you know, reading, reading outfield play, going first to third. This is, you know, these are the things that we talk about in the mornings about what we want to see transpire when we play these exhibition games. So, uh, and the true test obviously is, you know, when the regular season starts is the, you know, the performance aspect of, of, of all players, you know, veteran players, younger players, but, you know, spring training is a great environment in these, in these games you know, give us an opportunity to, you know, push the envelope a little bit on certain on certain things we're encouraging players to do. Thank you. Do you see, I mean, the bat speed seems to be better. He seems to be more, made an adjustment of some kind. This is, you know, I think the bat speed's still the same. I think the bat path is <clears throat> something that we've talked about a little bit and, and a starting point. And you know, and the guy, and the hitting guys can be a little bit more technical, and even Matt can probably be more technical. It's still the same swing, and you know, we've never tinkered, uh, you know, with how he swings the bat because he's got a beautiful swing, right. and we got a, and he's got a swing that you know we think can play in the big leagues. But we felt as though the path to the ball needed to be a little, a little, a little shorter, and. Uh, to close up some holes, and also, uh, you know, the the positioning of where his hand started and what he and what the barrel did uh, when he got ready to unleash his swing. Those are the things that I think became you know pretty technical with the hitting guys and Mac. And Mac was part of that this winter. You know, his discussions with Salazar and, and Doherty. You know, two guys uh, on our you know on the hitting side that live here. And Mac lived here in the winter time, so that you know that all coincided their their work together. Done, and they can they can they can get to that a little bit more specific than. Has Mac done enough to have a chance to see if he's every day like DJ? Uh, well, I, you know, it's, I mean, every everybody's career is different. I don't like to compare guys to guys. Okay, or just one of those built to play every day guys. <laughs> yeah, potentially. Yeah. Now you're going to need every guy in your rotation. But We're going to need them all. We need them all. All but five of them. Kyle Freeland, how much of your guys' postseason <coughs> goals relies on him, you know, being the guy replicating last year? Well, uh, he's, a, he's a big part of it. Uh, you know, every every start's important, right? All, all 33, 32, whatever, you know, if you go to the post every fifth day and you make your starts, that's – now in this day and age, it's you know right around 32, 33 starts. Those are important. The guy who pitches after him, the guy who pitches before him, thirty-two or thirty-three, hopefully, are just as important. But you know, Kyle is a guy that you know through his past performance and and specific, specifically last year, set a high standard, and that he wants to duplicate or improve upon, and he's and he's very capable of that. And if he does it, that'd be awesome for the team. Yeah, um, I know we talked to you after the Angels game the other night about Tony Walters when he hit the home run, but bigger picture, in the last week, two weeks maybe, are you seeing the consistency of the bats? The, yes. The approach that you want yeah, the, to. Yeah, yeah. Here in these games, we're seeing the same, same, same approach. 
same at bat, same swing, same stance, same hand position, uh, same spot in the batter's box. Uh, you know, these are all things that Tony would tinker with, even from game to game. So we're seeing more consistency in some of the some of the mechanical things that the guys have worked on with Tony. And I think it's it's resulted in uh, you know better at bats, even though he might not have gotten the hits, but there's been you know, some some balls that have been hit on the nose that have been caught. You know, it's baseball. But, you know, his overall approach is much better. And and the results when he hits the ball have been better as far as the contact. The kind of consistency. And the contact rate better. Yeah. The kind of consistency that can like sure. improve he can that he can improve his ever even as you I think so. Yes, ball. I hope so. Yes. That's why we play. To find that out. <clears throat> Yeah, how difficult is the twenty fifth man to play? Like Willie Reynolds. Difficult, difficult, and a, and a couple and a couple spots on the on the pitching staff, probably in the bullpen. You know, it looks as though you know. I think we've we mentioned about Sensatella and Russin will probably not make the opening day roster due to due to injuries. Uh, so there's a couple spots there that you know it's going to come down to you know two or three or four guys that we're looking at. And also on the, you know, the bench players, whether it's Reynolds, uh, Valeka, Tapia, Talkman, uh, you know, that group, you know, there's some tough decisions there. So, and those are, you know, the decisions that will be made, you know, as we get closer. And they might even come down to the wire, right? They might come down, you know, when we're out of Arizona and, and, and in Florida, you know, for those Couple of days prior to being in Miami. Or do you have to put the roster in on Wednesday, or do you have like Thursday? I think it's Thursday, Thursday morning. Yeah. Or is it? Or is it Wednesday night? I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Former Reinhold Tapia, uh, he, he had some results early in the spring, cooled off a little bit. What have you seen an improvement though in his process and his approach? You know his. You know spring training. You know obviously you. you 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 know you never over evaluate spring training, you know the old adage, uh, you know you don't over evaluate uh, September's or spring training. But uh, you know Ramil's Tapia or a process. I don't. I'm not quite sure I, what I don't know what you mean by process. But <clears throat> he has a certain way how he goes about an at bat, and that's his way, and it's been successful uh, in the minor leagues. Uh, it's been tested. Uh, you know, to the tune of a couple hundred at bats in the big leagues, and I'm not sure what his <clears throat> big league average is offhand to 70, maybe. With a couple homers on bases, I think right in the low, you know, 310 to 320. Uh, there's like a 35, 40 point gap, I think, there. You'd like to see that a little higher, I think, on average of position players. But, you know, he's, I think he's shown that. Uh, you know, through his at bats in the big leagues, there's a there's a hitter in there. He doesn't, uh, you know, he he doesn't uh, he doesn't not handle good big league pitching. You know what I mean? I think you, we've seen that. We saw the grand slam off Archie Bradley. That's hard to do. He did it. Uh, we've seen <coughs> we've seen other hits against quality big league pitchers. So uh, he hasn't been overmatched, uh, but. You know, there's his type is uh, at times when he's on, he's on, man. He can hit. He gets hot. He gets hitterish, and he can hit. And other times, you know, there, there's a little bit of a chase in there, expanding the zone. You'd like to improve on that because you know there's big league pitchers who could expose him to that, but you know, time will tell. But he's proven enough that uh, to think that he can handle big league pitching. Now the question is whether he can handle it in the type of role that's that's that we might that that, that we might that we might that I mean we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll we'll. S that's why we play. Oh. I don't have a crystal ball. Over the course though of the last couple of years, because he's he's admitted <clears throat> struggling with pinch hitting one at bat a game. I, Who doesn't? Yeah, right. Um, right. Manny Mota. Manny Mota, <laughs> baby, the best of all time. Uh, uh, Lenny Harris. <laughs> <laughs> John Giambi handled it all right in his career. Uh, now, when you think about these fellas, right? Oh, 
old. A bunch of old guys. <laughs> I like to. I like to. Uh, uh, I like to refer to them as experienced. We're old. Good. Okay. But I have one more. Uh, looking at the say he's on the team and you look okay. at the roster. Okay. Hypothetically. Of, hypothetically, he's on the team. Okay. Look at the roster of guys. He's improved a lot. He's communicating with us in English. The fighter. Can you tell him to do that for me with me? Yeah. <laughs> it's better English than it was. But those things are important where there's discussing sure. situations in the game. How are you structured to make sure that, you know, the communication is successful that will help him because, um, you know, he's maybe, maybe he's not going to be in there all the time. Maybe there are things he needs to be watching during the game. How do you make sure that communication is there with him to make sure he's seeing the things that he needs to be seeing? Well, translation will come into play, mm -hmm. right? Uh, are you familiar with two people? Aaron Munoz yes. and Dave Magadan, both fluent in Spanish. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. There you go. You learn something new every day. Mag is really fluent. He's like really fluent. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay. His parents are of his parents of are of Spanish descent. There's grandparents. There's parents are yeah. from Spain. That's a different kind of Spanish. Hey. <laughs> All I know, all I know, is that I'm in the dugout and Tapia is walking through the dugout or at the plate or by the bat rack, and Magadan and him are talking Spanish. And you know what I do? Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.